history of the democracy. History, listen, listen. History of democracy. That history, that history of history democracy, democracy was okay. first you had the like, KMT. The B movie secure, is an amazing So why wasn't it in the... Why, why, why didn't that on, democracy man. movement extend like, to the mainland? My God. You yell a lot for a guy who's dodging a boxing match. I'm dodging the fucking boxing yes, match. Yes, you are. Really? So you want me to dedicate six months of my time at the expense of my streaming career to train wait, for fucking boxing? You, wait, wait, wait. You challenged Vosh and said since he didn't accept No, I didn't. Actually, did. actually, I, the I did not. No, no, no. You fucking coward. Oh, really, really? You Look at this coward. fucking liar. This fucking liar oh, going yeah. on record You're saying coward. I challenged Vosh. Yes, you did. You Someone. called him a pussy for not hey, accepting hey. it. Hey, hey. No, I didn't. Yes, First you of did. all, uh, I'm scrolling to it. He says, let's have a boxing match out of the blue. I'm, I'm, I'm with J my boy Jackson on his roof smoking a cigar. I get this fucking DM, let's have a boxing match. You, It'll be fun. And you, and then you 3 start, and then you then I said, Then I said, okay, need one month minimum for training and promotion. So you agree. That's reasonable. You agree. You're right, you're right. But nobody told me you had experience. Wait, so the problem is you... <laughs> listen, listen, hold on, hold on. It's not Let's something do MMA you just, It's not just something Let's you do MMA then. MMA is not a street fight either. So literally, you're just saying, "Let's go into an alleyway and fight," which you know I can't. If do you want, to, no, prison. no, I'm saying, if you want to test my manhood, that's on you. Well, I just think you're a coward and you backed out of it because then you learn to know how to defend myself. Why are you worth it to me? Because you go around, you challenge all these people. To right? what? You challenge Bana Banata, for example. You yeah. challenge him. You said you go to Argentina. Yeah. And I say I'll go to your yeah. city, because your cause, gym, because your community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And you accept my boxing. So it's match, worth it to me. Out. So you somehow it's worth it you to me. You dodged it because you're a coward. So let's, let's continue. You're not a real let's man. Continue. You just you're, flex on the internet. Saying, you you look like a fat fuck. All right, all right, all right. So you would lose to a fat guy. You look like an inbred fat guy. You look like an inbred fat retard. So you'd lose any fat retard, that's what you're saying. Okay, the challenge. Uh, you know what? Uh, I'm going to call it after the opening statements, we'll jump right into the, like I said, Q&A with a hard close up. If you help me keep track of that, 2.15, uh, 14.15 for that. With that, who would like to go first? I'm fine either way. Uh, you go ahead, Dylan. Okay. The history of Taiwan is a history of struggle, whether it be the indigenous people's movements against the Qing dynasty, which they struggled dearly. I believe one of the phrases was every uh, three years an insurrection, every five years an uprising all the way to modern ages as they try to make a bulwark against an invading force which is consistently tried to be aggressive against the new state of a democratic republic of China. If the question is, is Taiwan a part of China? The answer is yes. It is part of the republic of China, Taiwan. When we talk about the justification from a historical perspective, you could look at the resistance movement against Japanese, uh, Spanish, Dutch and Chinese imperialism in what you can call Taiwan, what you can call uh, Thai, the government in Taipei, or even the Republic of Formosa, if we're talking about the Japanese. It has a history of democracy. If you look at the, Republican, uh, the Republic of Formosa, the declaration that they put out, it was very Parisian in nature. It was, we are establishing a republic in here to defend against the Japanese invaders. That was in 1895. And when we talk about the modern history of Taiwan, it is a struggle to not only develop the identity, which is a new one, one that is Taiwanese in nature, when the vast majority of the population now identify as Taiwanese, they have their own language, they have their own currency, they have their own judicial system, they have their own military, they have their own laws, they have, really, their own nation. But it's not a nation in the eyes of some. Why? Because they're playing pretend. They're playing pretend. If I was to take out this phone in my pocket and say, this is not a phone, now it functions in every way as a phone. I can turn it on, I can text, I can call, I can do all these things, but it's not a phone. I'm not being honest with you. I'm lying for any number of reasons. In this case, people are lying because they don't want to piss off the People's Republic of China, the mainland government. Now let's talk about the conclusions if someone was to say, you know what, I disregard the historical basis for Taiwan's independent struggle in the indigenous community or its own language or its own identity that's developed or the fact that they want their own democracy. I disregard the historical basis. Let's talk about the reality of disregarding that historical basis and saying that the Taiwanese cannot have their own state and this is a merely an internal affair. Taiwan is a nation of 25 million people. It is one of the most dense nations on earth, 17 when it comes to density. If you uh, listen to the Taipei Times, it's actually first if you exclude mountainous regions. 
Syria was 20 million, and it ranked 67th on the density scale. If we were to drop our support for Taiwan, the likelihood of war would skyrocket, as the leverage that Taiwan has in upholding its democracy would vanish. And a war across the Taiwan Strait would be an absolute disaster. Not only would a refugee crisis spiral out of control worse than what we saw in Syria, but America would actually be one of the prime recipient of refugees because the Taiwanese community has deep ties to California and many of them would be feeling persecution, political persecution that is, from the government coming in. That is something we would have to feel the full effects of. The semiconductor industry, which the world relies on, when one company within Taiwan, the TMSC, produces 50% of the foundries necessary for uh, semiconductor production, that would take a hit. International trade would take a hit. Our trade with that nation would take away. America's reputation would take a hit. Not to even talk about the civil liberties that the Taiwanese have fought against, uh, say, Chen Kai-shek, for example, to develop. That's another thing. Many people will talk about the white terror or Chen Kai-shek's government or the brutality of it, and will use that as a justification to dis delegitimize the Taiwanese people and their struggle for independence. Well, that's interesting, since the people that Chen Kai-shek purged first were the independence advocates. Chen Kai-shek wanted to reconquer the mainland, and so he purged the indigenous people's advocates for an independent Taiwan. And those people fought for years to have a democratic Taiwan with his own system of government. So I'm not going to ramble anymore. I have a lot of points I want to go into and a lot of questions for Haas about the conclusions that would come from uh, his worldview here. But I'll just stop it there. So there's three points I want to address uh, amidst all of that. <clears throat> Firstly, let me preface this by saying there is absolutely no historical basis for the region of Taiwan to be a separate country from China. The history of the relationship between the Han Chinese and the indigenous people of Ch uh, Taiwan is a rather interesting one. The only problem is that Taiwan is currently around 98 to 99 percent Han Chinese. So there's absolutely no basis in the historically indigenous people of Taiwan for the indigenous, uh, for, sorry, for an independence movement. As a matter of fact, some of the most renowned indigenous politicians within uh, Taiwan are the most ardent advocates for unification and anti-independence. So it's rather interesting that the indigenous people of Taiwan, by and large, are against independence, whereas some Han liberal elites within Taiwan, pro-American, are the most in favor of independence. So this talk of the indigenous struggle against the Qing or the, the Han Chinese is a complete nonsensical, uh, non-factor in the question of whether Taiwan is a country or not, because indigenous people do not factor whatsoever in the question of whether Taiwan uh, is an independent country. Now, second of all, <clears throat> in the history, I will concede that politics has oftentimes played a role in defining nation states. France was a historically united uh, region based on the kingdom of France and the common shared language, customs, etc. But it did not become a nation state until it was united by the republic and ideals of the French Revolution. So I will concede that politics often plays a part, politics and religion, in the formation of nations. The only problem is that China is not just a nation. It is not a nation state. It is a 5,000 year long civilization that has endured many different types of political systems and political um, forms, while nonetheless maintaining being the one country of China, the one civilization of China. Uh, Zhongguo, the middle kingdom of the world, basically, is how it conceived itself. So this 5,000 year long uh, civilization is not reducible to a certain political project or a political ideal, which is actually something the republic, uh, sorry, the nationalists like Chiang Kai-shek were able to respect and acknowledge throughout the entirety of the Republic of China's struggle against the People's Republic, a civil war that technically did not end. Both Chiang Kai-shek and Mao Zedong recognized that there is one China. They were merely disagreeing over who should rule that one China. And the independence movement of Taiwan has never been popular. It's always been a marginal phenomena. A phenomena we can infer was definitely propped up by the Americans. Chiang Kai-shek himself had to uh, he, uh, butt heads with the Americans and engage in um, minor diplomatic conflicts with the Americans who were pushing independence. Um, the founding mission of the Kuomintang, sorry if I mispronounce it, the KMT, was one China. The notion that Taiwan would become an independent effaces 
the very foundation of Taiwan as a so-called separate country from the People's Republic. The founding mission of the Kuomintang was based on the ideals of Sun Yat-sen for the unification and reju rejuvenation of the 5,000-year-long Chinese civilization on the basis of um, the ideals of the modern world. Now, finally, the notion that a Chinese uh, invasion of Taiwan, a Chinese invasion of China, in other words, would lead to a refugee crisis, assumes that the people of Taiwan, the Chinese people of Taiwan, are willing to fight to defend the status quo that is now in place. Every form of research and study that has been conducted among the people of Taiwan has shown that they are not willing to take up arms, they are not willing to have any bloodshed uh, to prevent unification with China. So there's no impetus for the people of Taiwan to, ha why would there be refugees when there would be no conflict to begin with? China, if hypothetically this would happen, would simply come in and finally, I wanna make one last point. The notion that Taiwan's current constitution and laws and um, whatever would be destroyed upon unification it gravely misunderstands the current uh, Chinese system. The Chinese system, the precedent set by Hong Kong, is of one country, two systems. Many different systems can exist under the sovereignty of one China. And China has expressed, the People's Republic of China has expressed its fullest intention to allow the people of Taiwan to maintain their specific system so long as they acknowledge there is only one China. I rest my case. So the first thing I want to say, uh, so there's a bunch of things that were wrong there, but I'm just going to start with the uh, indigenous communities. The in indigenous community make up 2% of the population. That is true, okay, if we're just talking about people who are just primarily indigenous, if we're not talking about people who are culturally indigenous or we're talking about interfaith marriages and the children. We're just, we're just going to talk about the 2%. They make up 2% of the population, yet 60% of the nation's special elite forces. 60%. They make it up an extremely disproportionate amount of the nation's military. The military that defends Taiwan, the indigenous community, which you say, oh, they're there. Many of them love the idea of Chinese invasion or China coming or any of these things. That's not what I said. They vastly support the Taiwan being, being independent, number they're one. KMT and number loyalists. two, they, over, they are overrepresented when it comes to the military. And if you talk about them being KMT loyalists, that's true. A lot of people The KMT support, wants one me, China. Stop interrupting me, Hans, okay? This isn't the internet. We're in person. Act like a civil So person. what? I don't care if it's not on the internet. Why yeah, do I, I give know. a shit? Okay. Calm down, Hans, please. Anyway, the indigenous community are overrepresented in the military because they're willing to defend Taiwan and the system of governance that has slowly evolved on across the Taiwan Strait. Studies show otherwise. That's not true. By it the way, true. the studies you reference when it comes to, oh, but the Taiwanese people would not defend. According to the Taipei Times, two-thirds of the population of Taiwan have said they'd be willing to pick up arms in defense of Taiwan. Two-thirds of the population. That's bullshit. That's just true. That's 100% bullshit. I'm just... The I'm Taipei, the if the Taipei Times has said two-thirds of the people of Taiwan are willing to take up arms, the Taipei Times is lying. Well, then you're lying to me right now. That's just true. Well, I, there's no way for us to independently verify this right now. So I'm anybody accusing, can Google it. Google it. The, Everybody at home. The Google people it. then Google it at home. Two thirds. Look up Isn't actual. Look up Some informed studies. The surveys have shown. The polling has shown. People in Taiwan are not willing to risk any bloodshed in the midst of a Chinese uh, People's Republic of China. It's not true. Two thirds of the population. You have one. You have one source and multiple sources. That but you haven't even okay. Source one study then. I'm Google it at home. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So I have one source. You have no source. Oh, you, you brought a fucking binder and I came empty-handed. Good luck. Well, that's your fault. You yeah. should have come prepared. Well, actually, Dylan, 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 the thing is, I don't need a binder. That's the thing. I don't need to take notes. Communist notice. work <laughs> ethic, huh? Yeah. Listen, uh, the thing is, I don't need a binder. I don't need a, to cite a, a one study from the Taipei Times. To the extent of my familiarity, uh -huh. the people of Taiwan are not. No, it's up to the audience to independently verify it. I can, I can trust that I'll... Uh, come out on the right when it comes to that. I'm sure you will. Okay, so when it comes to the KMT, the KMT has lost the two elections. When it comes to the but idea But the indigenous that, support let, let the KMT. Geez, let me finish. Wait, wait, you let can't, you, you, you no, may not interrupt me, okay? I'm talking whether you like it or not. So the KMT, this is about a different point, so this is why I can calm down. The KMT, when it comes to the independence struggle and whether independence is popular, have lost the two last two elections. Tsai Ing-wen has won the last two elections 
in decent amounts in the Democratic Progressive Party, which is the party that she's a part of, is the Independence Party, the pro-Independence Party. And she has stated on multiple occasions and has been re-elected on the platform of Taiwan does not need to declare independence for we are already independent. She points to the judicial system. She points to the military. She points to the language. She points to a separate history. She points to all these things for a justifiable reason to show that Taiwan is independent and the world is upholding a facade that it isn't an independent nation. <laughs> They're pretending. The thing is, if I go to Taiwan, Haas, and I call the Chinese police the mainland Chinese police, if I'm getting mugged, they're not going to show up. You know what's going to show if up? You, the Taiwanese in, police. In a region of China, it would work the same exact way. You're not going to call uh, the region in southern China if you're in northern China. What a stupid point. Second you, of all... Wait, are you really saying that the Chinese government has authority over the Taiwanese government? It, does, it doesn't have authority in Hong Kong. It doesn't. Well, it doesn't have authority in Hong Kong. It doesn't have authority no, in Hong Kong. No, it doesn't. Wait, you're it, telling it, it me, are you telling me, yeah, it does send It has agents, an extradition law. It, it sends law. agents it into Hong Kong. Don't yell at the me. US sends, the U.S. sends Lower agents. Lower your voice, the US, okay? the U.S. sends agents all over the world. So Lower what? Lower your voice. But they do it because they're trying to exert their direct authority. China has it, agents and in it Taiwan. Is slowly absorbing China has it. Not agents to mention in the Taiwan. Fact that they are trying to enforce their authority. For example, in Hong Kong, let's talk about the two. China countries. has the agents country. in Hong Kong. Let's talk about in the one Taiwan. country, two systems. He thinks is so favorable, even though the Taiwanese people are horrified at the notion. Definitely after developments in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, due to recent legislation that was passed, if you boo the Chinese national anthem, you can actually go to prison for that due to national security legislation that the Chinese government. Is put in there. There's and similar laws from, in South that Korea. That came from, and I disagree with those laws. And that came from. So why are you blaming the People's Republic? That's because Asian that came culture. From, because That's that part came of from East the, Asian that, culture. But you don't not, disrespect wait, not the not national Taiwanese anthem. Culture. If I go to Taiwan and I say fuck Taiwan, fuck the government, boo the national anthem, they won't arrest me because they have a dedication to democracy, unlike the mainland government. That's only recently because of liberalization efforts Good. that came at the expense of uh, the, the status quo with the KMT. But moreover, there's a number of points you weaseled your way out of. So Weasel. I want to I want to pin your uh, pin you down on those points. So first of all, you claimed that first you made the claim that the overwhelming majority of the armed forces are made up by indigenous people. That's I not never said that. I said the special forces. The special forces. That's not because they're pro-independence. They have always been a stronghold of KMT loyalism and fierce anti-independence uh, sentiment. So the so you it's a complete non-point. You mentioned the president of uh, Taiwan say that we're already a country. You want to maintain the status quo? Then maintain the status quo, but try to change your official name to the Republic of Taiwan and see what will happen. It is the Republic of China that is the current status quo. She's saying we basically function already as another country. That's her opinion. See what happens when they try to make that formal or official and see what the response is going to be from China. If Taiwan attempts to pursue secession from China, China will act swiftly uh, in response. And the US can't do a goddamn thing about it uh, whether you like it or not. Military, military planners disagree with you. But that's besides the point. We're not they can't do a We're goddamn thing about, about strategy. it. I'm sure you're not a military general, okay? No matter how many Soviet caps you put on. Okay? Then just wait a few so, years. Wait a few, we will wait a few years, and we'll see what happens. Anyway, when it comes to the idea that the indigenous community, oh, they don't support an independent Taiwan, even though they were at the front and center of every single independent struggle in Taiwanese history, they're at the front and center. <laughs> they were the first purge. Against the Han Chinese, Chinese, who are 90, wait, 98%. They were the first. They were the first First purge by Chen Kai-shek. There is no, con the, there is no continuity between there is no continuity uh -huh. between the historical struggles of the Taiwanese indigenous population and the current Taiwanese uh, independence movement, which when is overwhelmingly talk, dominated by well, Han of Chinese it's liberals. Overwhelmingly dominated by the Han Chinese and led by them. It's because it's ninety-eight percent of the population. But we're talking about a disproportionate then why, amount in the military, specifically the special forces. So why is there a disproportionate also, amount in the special forces, but not a disproportionate amount in the independence movement? In the independence movement, it is a disproportionate. No, there isn't. Yes, it is. Anyway, what percentage wrong. of indigenous people support the independence movement? It's not. It's not two thirds. Okay, tell me your percentage. It's not fifty percent. It's not two thirds. Tell me. It could not. Not to be more than twenty percent. Do you have any data for that? Any I'm source? willing to risk everything by saying that. Everything. Yeah. Wow. Even your soul. Uh, okay. I'm do. I'm already <laughs> doing that by uh, debating you right now. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you are. Okay. So what was the second point you made? There was a second point besides that. Uh, the second point was about the history of nation states and politics. Um, okay. Well, that wasn't what I was going. But I'll address that anyway. So. Even if we were to disregard all historical basis for Taiwan being an independent nation uh, when it comes to its long struggle of independence, let's just talk about modern history then. 
The people of Taiwan struggled against Chiang Kai-shek's White Terror. And if any of you don't know what the White Terror is, the White Terror was a system of purges that Chiang Kai-shek and his sons, until about 1987, from about 1950, I forget exactly when it started, uh, purged independence advocates and opposition to the government. They were scared that this would jeopardize their ability to reconquer the mainland of China, since most of the independence struggle didn't really have any interest in invading to the Chinese mainland and reconquering. And so they purged them. Hundreds of thousands were purged, to be exact. And those people struggled for years until the 1990s when they were eventually able to actually get a democracy. And that history of struggle is the history of modern Taiwan, struggling against the authoritarian system of government that was in place. And then they were able to institute a liberal democracy, which they have to this day. <laughs> Do you disagree with the fact Of that course I disagree. It's the, not a liberal democracy. The military might of the Kuomintang is the foundation of Taiwan as having any political independence of from the mainland whatsoever. It is the arms taken up by the KMT that has secured that. And it is for the same reason that is the arms of the special forces that you're talking about made up by the pro-KMT loyalists. I mean, the KMT are the ones who are securing the political independence in the first place. If these liberals want to okay. go you're and, not addressing and have points. democracy, their democracy has not secured any... You're not, you're, you're not the, addressing The liberal democracy points. you're talking about has no basis in any sovereign power. Okay, I don't... It has no basis in any military you're not power. Addressing my the points. same power that made Taiwan possible uh -huh. as a separate state in the first place is something the liberal democrats have no stronghold in whatsoever. So it is only on the basis of the ideals of the KMT and the view that there is one China that has kept Taiwan separate from the mainland in the first place. Okay, you're floundering. But when it comes to... Can you address the point that I'm floundering? You never addressed my point. What's your so point? My point was that the modern history of Taiwan when it comes to the population is a history of struggle against the authoritarian system that Chen Kai-shek... But in so far... Let me finish... Please. But first you have I'm the I'm not going to let you talk. I heard what I'm you not, said. I'm not I finished. heard what you said. I'm not finished talking. Finish, finish, finish. Go ahead, Dylan. Finish. I will finish. Yeah. And you'll be quiet. Wait, so, really? Will I be quiet? Yeah, you will be I'm quiet. bond of what? Me, because I'm talking, because it's a debate, it's a conversation. Okay, okay. You don't don't sit here and say you will be quiet. Well, then be quiet. I'm not going to fucking be quiet. Be quiet. Don't talk. If you tell me Jesus to be quiet, Christ. I won't be. How about that? Okay, you won't be? No. Okay, then yell, please. Yeah. So, what you're nah. basically saying... Nah. Which, that's okay, you can keep yelling. No, I'll keep you, talking. You can, so you can keep fucking yelling. You can keep fucking yelling. The history of the democracy... History, listen, listen. The history of democracy... That history, that history of democracy, of democracy was... Okay. First, you had the KMT... The B movie securing, is an amazing So, movie. why wasn't it... Why, why didn't that democracy movement extend to the mainland because the democ because there's oh, because it's a separate it's a fucking territory exactly it's a separate territory no it's not yes, it's a it's a separate it's territory completely. it's a separate territory I'm because yelling. it's a separate it's territory so it's a separate territory because yeah. the KMT secured it as such okay calm down yeah that's the only reason calm it's a down. fucking separate territory stop, in the first place stop swinging out and calm down Okay. You're a time waster. You bullshit and waste time. You're, you're not letting me speak. You you're a fucking time waster. Voice. You need to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Say your piece. My though. God. Okay. So the history, finally, for the fifth time, the history of modern Taiwan is a history of struggle against political authoritarianism, particularly Chiang Kai-shek. Okay. Chiang Kai-shek, he did a white terror against the people of Taiwan and they fought for their freedom and they earned it through blood and sacrifice against the government. And for the last 30 years, they've upheld a democracy, which through that democracy and the consent of the governed, they have been able to elect democracies and politicians represent their interests. And the vast majority of the people within Taiwan support continuing the status quo. And second, if you were to follow the status quo, is the independence when you check polling. The reason why they choose the status quo currently over independence is purely because if they were, and I agree with Haas on this, to declare independence right now, they would be bombed to shit and millions would die. It would be a disaster. That's a terrible thing, by the way, that a nation and its people declaring independence, even though it's already independence, the would result in a bombing and destruction of a sovereign people with its own identity, culture, language that has started and continues to separately develop what happened from the to Chinese. the Confederates. Only Let's talk about that. What is the current evil that the Chinese government. When you secede from a sovereign territory, you ask me a the sovereign is not going to tolerate secession. You've got to be able to respond to the question, Haas. Yeah. Okay. So 
the difference between the Confederacy and yeah. when you talk about this The evil is this, from the Chinese perspective. It is cutting off a piece of China and basically sub, uh, submitting it to foreigners. Wow. China has endured the century of humiliation. It remembers the century of humiliation. China will never submit to the dominance of Anglo-Saxon imperialists, and it will uh, refuse this on bond uh, of war. So if Taiwan were to commit uh, independ so-called independence from China, it would become a satellite state of the Americans. China's not going to tolerate a piece of its territory being cut off. If people try to take China's territory, they're going to be met with a swift response. It's interesting that I say people. When the people we're talking about are the people who live there. Those are the people who would want it to be a sovereign nation. It's not the Americans coming in and They don't. Sh just shut the fuck up, please. They don't. You gotta let me speak, okay? My God, fucking, Jesus. Okay, so the people there, overwhelmingly, and there's no data you could provide that, that rejects this, do not want to be part of the mainland government under any circumstances. That's not only true. 6%, only 6% of the population actually want reunification eventually or immediately with the mainland government. Only 6%. That means I've 94%. At, the, the data you're going to cite, I don't know what it's from. Yeah, if there's, it's from the Beijing Times. Yeah, fucking, yeah. Why should I just trust the Taipei Times but not the Beijing Times? Because, okay, tell me what's wrong with the Taipei Times. I can tell you about the state funding that comes from for certain news publications that publish the data. There's no about. difference. So my source I versus your you, source. I've just told you about the funding. That's the difference. Okay. Okay, what's the funding difference? Taipei Times isn't funded by the Taiwanese government. Oh, it's just funded by private corporations that uh, prop up the government. Okay, so there's no so source that I could source go to. Back, first of all, there's two points, because you weaseled your way out of the first one, then I'm going to address sure the second one. The first point is simply this. You're talking, you're, you're, you're giving this, uh, this so a sob story about the history of democratic struggle within Taiwan. Yeah. All of that still rests upon the foundational bedrock of true sovereignty, sovereignty in the true Hobbesian, Carl Schmidt sense of sovereignty, as in mm -hmm. being able to enforce a state of exception, which is the KMT's military might. They have not changed this foundation, and the KMT is over, has founded, its founding mission was based on one China. Now the second thing we're talking about is whether which sources are, um, sorry, or sorry, with the polling data, polls have shown that the majority of, it is true, people in Taiwan want to maintain the status quo. But as far as the Taiwanese people, whether they want to along the road eventually become independent or along the road want to join with, um, with China, both of these are smaller than the percentage who say they either don't care or they would not care either way. So what you're saying is patently wrong. Both of these people, eventually independence or eventually unification, both are a small minority of uh, Taiwan's uh, population. Okay. So the first thing is on this, this Hobbesian nerd shit, okay? So I don't care about any of that. I'm going to be completely honest. What I care about. You're not about educated. Okay. Elitism. Just like you don't care about China's history. Okay. I shut the fuck up. Okay. So the thing is, I can care about one thing and one thing only here, and that's the consent of the governed. And as a patriotic... That's so based on philosophy. You Jesus don't want to talk Christ. about Hobbes or Carl Schmitt, then don't talk about abstract philosophical principles My God. like the consent of the going. government. Just keep fucking going. I contest I your foundational just political keep, philosophy. I don't, I don't you're, care. you're trying I don't to impose care. a state... Please, if you don't care, then don't fucking debate. Well, then don't Simple talk to me. That. If you don't want to talk to me, if you don't think it's this... If you want to run from the debate... Walk out the room. Walk away. You can walk, walk out because I'm talking about well, what I want to talk about. It's my turn I don't care. I don't care. It's my turn to talk. I don't care. I don't care. Then walk out! My God, you yell a lot for a guy who's dodging a boxing match. I'm dodging the fucking boxing yes, match. Yes, you are. Really? So you want me to dedicate six months of my time at the expense of my streaming career to train wait, for fucking boxing? You, wait, wait, wait. You challenged Vosh and said that he didn't accept it. No, I didn't. Pussy. Actually, you did. actually I, got the I did not. No, no, no. You fucking coward. Oh, really, really. You Look at this coward. fucking liar. This fucking liar oh, going yeah. on record You're a saying coward. I challenged Vosh. Yes, you did. You Someone, called him a pussy for not hey, accepting hey, it. Hey, hey. No, I didn't. Yes, First you of did. all, Someone came in my fucking chat and asked me, out. someone came in my chat and asked me, would you fight Vaz for a prize money of $50,000 or $80,000? Fuck yeah, I would. Then you challenge that, Madame Panada. That would, I, that would cover all of the streaming, all of the fucking yearly costs. I could sacrifice my streaming career to fucking do that. So of course I'm going to accept that. Furthermore, you're a fucking nobody and Vaz has some clout. So there's something there to gain from that. I'm bigger than you. you. You're bigger than Vosh? I'm bigger than you. How long have you been in the scene? 
Spot you got so your shit. You, How you, you, got, you, you, got, you. you got all your fucking clout from the November election. I'm rapidly rising average 600 views. I see your viewership when I'm live. You don't have more fucking views than me. I already fucking outpaced you, Dylan. And oh, I've been here uh, less time than you have. What happened to the infrared showdown? Oh, what yeah, happened to the showdown is that I came to LA, LA out of business for a month. In one month. Oh yeah. One oh yeah. Month. I went to and LA. I went to LA for one a month. month. I went to LA for a month and got COVID. That's How can what you be so happened. manly online and be such a coward? How am I a coward? You're a coward because you go out like you're a big strong. I am. Man. You want to fucking test me outside? Are you really gonna threaten you, me right now? I'm not. I'm saying you wanna you wanna ask if I'm a big man or if then go ahead and test me outside. You really wanna go outside and fight me right now? You can test me. You're free to test my man. Dude, don't. Dude. You're free to test my man, dude, Dylan. I you said. Don't assume that. A fucking Look, boxing match with rules. Said, he, hey, don't he, assume a fucking boxing match with rules is gonna be the man, same as a street, street fighter. fighter. You know what happened? All then then test me. They then the test MMA, me. They, they all got obliterated. Me. They all got went away. Okay. The problem is infrared. You asked me. Or the, here was all the conditions. You said first we're gonna. Okay, it's Michigan. It's a Detroit. It's gonna be at this gym. It's gonna be ten rounds. And I meet mean every single one of the things you asked me for that boxing No, it's match. not. And then you, you asked me. Hold on. I know how to defend myself. I have the DMs. And now you're a coward. Go get them. I have the. Yeah, I challenge. Do you have to challenge everyone else? I have the DMs. Get them. Can we go back to the topic? Please? I have the DMs. Can we go back to the topic? We can go here's back to the Dylan. Topic. So here's what happened. Actually, here's what happened. Uh -huh. It was 3 a.m. my time in L.A. This psychopath, coping psychopath. loser, he's up at 6 a.m. all night. He's seething about me, thinking about me. What? I was banned on Twitch. I forgot who this fucking guy was. Oh. He DMs oh. me. He goes, oh. what a weirdo. He goes, look at this. Uh, I'm scrolling to it. He says, let's have a boxing match. I don't do. I'm, I'm, I'm with J my boy Jackson on his roof smoking a cigar. I get this fucking DM. Let's have a boxing match. You, It'll be fun. And then, and then you 3 a.m. Then, then, then I said, okay, need one month minimum for training and promotion. So you agree. That's reasonable. You agree. You're right. You're right. But nobody told me you had experience. Wait, so the <laughs> problem is you. <laughs> listen, listen, hold on, hold on. If you don't recognize that boxing is about experience, you're a fucking idiot. Boxing is all about exactly experience. Audience, that works. It's not a street fight. It's not a fucking street fight. It's not Let's something. Do MMA you just, then. It's not just something. Let's you, do MMA then. MMA is not a street fight either. So literally, you're just saying, let's go into an alleyway and fight, which you know I can't. If do you want, to no, no, I'm saying, if you want to test my manhood, that's on you. Well, I just think you're a coward and you backed out of it because then you learn to know how to defend myself. Why are you worth it to me? Because you go around and you challenge all these people. To right? what? You challenge Bad Empanada, for example. You yeah. challenge him. You said you go to Argentina. Yeah. And I say, I'll go to your yeah. city. Because your cause, gym. Cause, your community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was willing to go there for him because I hate the guy that much. Uh huh. Yeah. And you accept my boxing. So it's worth it to me. Out. So you somehow it's worth it to me. You dodged it because you're a coward. So let's, let's continue. You're not a real let's man. Continue. You just you're, flex on the internet. Saying, the go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You can keep talking about a real man. You look like a fat fuck. All right, all right, all right. So you would lose the respect. You look like an inbred fat freak. Yeah, you'd lose the respect. Inbred fat freak. You lose the respect. Inbred fat freak. You lose the respect. You stand back. So let's continue. So Dylan, Dylan kept asking. Wait, I'm fat. So you'd lose them. You look like an inbred fat retard. So you'd lose the fat retard. That's what you're saying. Dylan, Dylan, retard. You scared the fat retard. Okay, the challenge is out there. Wrap this up real quick. He kept, we'll go to he, he, kept, he kept asking me 21 questions like, what's your weight class? Where do you want to have it? How many yeah, rounds do you want to have? Schedule. And I was just responding to you. I didn't impose all these fucking conditions on you. No, you I kept asked asking you. me the I made sure that all the, the, then you said 10 rounds and I say, hey, that's ridiculous because you don't know anything. And then, and then you were like, no, we have to do 10 rounds. I'll make sure it's No, what you now. said is that, you, know about you it. said a gym would not allow 10 rounds. Yeah, I was like, of course they would. I said, I can find, I said, I can, ten rounds I said, I know of gyms in Detroit that will tolerate 10 rounds and I'll get that. I didn't force the condition. And I agreed to it anyway. I didn't force any conditions. If you had a problem with that, you could have said so. And I agreed to oh, all of Okay, anyway. so I think where we've gotten to with this is there may be a boxing match in the future. So. With that being said now, you guys had loved a little bit about the will of the people, the history of China. Let's wrap it up for the next few minutes, closing that one, if we can avoid the boxing discussion. I did intro, he can start out. And so we'll do that, and then open it up to questions and answers at that point, so. Yeah, Taiwan is not a country. The overwhelming majority of sovereign countries in the world, if not almost pretty much all of them, don't recognize it as one. They recognize it as a vague breakaway province that's still struggling with the, uh, the central government of China. The country of Taiwan, supposed country of Taiwan, the official government is called the Republic of China. 
There has never been a significant dispute as to whether there is one China or not. This issue has been forced by the Americans. Uh, and it's as simple as that. Both the KMT, which founded Taiwan as a separate political territory, and the Communist Party of China, both have always agreed there is only one China. The pro-independence movement has never actually changed the foundation of uh, Taiwan as being based in the foundational ideals of Sun Yat-sen, which are also shared by the Communist Party of China. Okay, so the first thing about international recognition that needs to be noted here is international recognition matters not at all in my opinion when it comes to designating whether a nation is a nation or not a nation. Because if that's the case, then the mainland was not a country until what, 1971 when it was admitted to the United Nations? Or was it a country when the vast majority, when the majority of nations finally tipped from Taiwan to China, mainland China that is, when it comes to recognizing what country is and isn't the actual China? Because if that's the case, then what we're saying is that the mainland government wasn't a country until 1971, but 1970, it totally wasn't a country, even though it had all the trappings of a country. International recognition doesn't matter as much to me when it comes to this. Definitely when it comes to the idea of like, well, what, what about these superpowers that recognize it? Well, America doesn't recognize it. That doesn't matter to me. Doesn't matter to me at all. If every nation in the world tomorrow said we no longer recognize the United States as a nation, that doesn't mean the United States is no longer a nation state. It has all the trappings of a nation state. And when you look at Taiwan, it has its own language. It has its own separate history. It has its language. own language. Yes, you don't know about 70% Taiwanese language? You don't know that? How is it a separate language? They speak Han the Chinese. Taiwanese, okay, you don't know what you're talking about. Anyway. There's dialects of Han Chinese it's within my China, outro. too. It's my outro. Okay. So fucking stupid. Yeah, I, you are. You're right. Okay, so the thing is, they have all the trappings of a modern state. They've struggled for to build a separate system of governance, a democracy within Taiwan against an authoritarian system. They've seen the offer from Haas and his buddies, the two con one country, two systems. They saw it play out in Hong Kong, and the support for independence skyrocketed after seeing the result of that. Because they don't want that for their future. And let's say that everything, every single thing Haas said about the history of Taiwan is completely true. United States did not exist until 1776. Nations can be built with complex cultures and history in the blink of an eye through revolution and civil geopolitical strife. And so what I'm saying here is since they've developed their own culture, they've, the, the Taiwanese identity is a distinct identity now, and if you pull the people on, on Taiwan, they identify as Taiwanese majority, not Chinese. Some identify as both, I will say that. They have their own system of governance. They have their own judicial system. They have their own everything. Saying it is not an independent country is plain pretend, which I know communists like to do a lot. So that'll be that. All right. Well, thank you both for that interesting conversation and live mic. <laughs> Before we open it up for question and answer, I will say, please, if you have a question not dealing with the boxing match, feel free to come forward. If it's dealing with the boxing match, we'll handle those at the end. So, uh, if you will just stand in the middle, you don't have to be on one side or the other. So, doing your part. The other side will come up. You uh, might step a little closer. Oh, oh microphones are going to pick up from the camera. Uh, question for Infrared. Do you believe that it's morally right for Taiwan to be independent? No. And why, sir? Uh, I don't think the. Uh, People have a right to arbitrarily secede simply based on, uh, it's a betrayal of China to China's enemies. So I'm against this kind of betrayal. Simple as that. Can I get a counterfeit? They could say the same thing about America in 1776, but our rebellion was moral because we knew that the system of government that the king had was fundamentally wrong. Because we wanted it says nothing to do with the Shut material the factors. Taxation without representation it's nothing to do with the material taxation, factors behind Taxation 1776. without representation is wrong. And as a patriot, as you describe yourself, you should know that. The Taiwan system would be preserved under one country, two systems. No, it wouldn't. We yes, saw what happened would. in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, they passed an extradition bill, and there was a Western-fueled unrest and chaos Ooh, Western that, CIA. in order to restore law and order, the police of Hong Kong had to crack down on. Yeah, what happened Sanity during, Square, what right? happened during the, the riots of Black Lives Matter and uh, January 6th? Was this all an infringement oh, yeah. upon the rights of the American people? What? That the police cracked down on this? Was it, unrest? An, was it an infringement? And many times, yes, actually. Police brutality is a major issue in this country. 
Which yes, but but does that represent does it represent the same level of oppression? Look, you told me to stop. I'll respect yeah, that, the moderator. That's another debate. So let's go ahead to the next okay. question. Uh, so I, I haven't had much time to, to formulate this question, but it's something like, uh, and I think for infrared first, but I'd like both opinion from both. Is um, what is there actually going to be a benefit to say China as a whole, or maybe if you want to say the world as a whole, for China to kind of completely take over Taiwan? I feel like the people of Taiwan kind of like Hong Kong, when their rules start coming into play, the Taiwanese are going to be like, wait a minute, that's more kind of oppressive than we're used to. We're used to these more, free, more freedoms. And there's going to be a lot of very, un, there's going to be a whole, it's an island nation, isn't it? Taiwan, yes. Uh, it's a whole island nation of very unhappy people with new oppressive laws being put upon them. And I don't know how, like, who's happy about it? I feel like the Chinese are going to do it. It's going to be messy for them. It's going to be messy for the Taiwan. Why do it at all? Where's the, what's the benefit? So, um, it, it, I have to preface this. In the first place, it's none of our fucking business what China does uh, to its own territory because we are not China. We're a separate country, and we have to mind our own business and take care of our own people. So that's the first thing that's most important. But secondly, the Chi in case it matters, China has no intention of forcing laws or forcing its system on a people that don't want it. What China is interested in, in conserving is its geopolitical and territorial sovereignty. China does not want foreigners to meddle in its affairs and attempt to seize hegemony over uh, China's sovereignty and China's territory and so on and so on. China wants to protect itself from people who have a history of express military hostility and antagonism toward China simply for being an independent rising power that is disrupting the American uh, uh, world order of, of hegemony. So China's first and foremost interest is preserving sovereignty. Its interest is not imposing an ideology or system um, which is not of any real importance. China knows that it can't impose a system on a people that don't want it. So that's why the one country, two systems was even uh, implemented in the first place. So when it comes to the idea that it's not uh, really our issue, uh, we have had a historical relationship with the Taiwanese government that goes past multiple administrations. Uh, a refugee crisis across from the Taiwan Strait would be a disaster, not only for the world, but especially the United States, considering that the Taiwanese community is quite large in California. I'm pretty sure a lot of them would like to take their family members because they wouldn't want to be either politically persecuted or blown up. Since, again, if you were to exclude the mountainous terrain, Taiwan would be the number one most dense country in the world with a population of 25 million. To put that in perspective, Syria has a population of 20, had a population of 20 million before the Civil War and was the 67th most dense country in the world. And so when we talk about what would be a largely air campaign in Taiwan, that would be a humanitarian disaster, creates a massive refugee crisis. This doesn't even need to talk about our trade relationship with Taiwan and our interest there, or semiconductors, with 50% of the world's semiconductors being produced by the TSMC, which of course is based in Taiwan, which right now with supply line shortages, that being bombed to shit, or us not having access to that, would also be a massive issue for the United States when it comes to the idea it's not our business. Also, China's extremely hypocritical when it comes to this point because it says that, well, this is a civil war and Haas correctly technically states that it is technically a historical ongoing civil war. The main, not even in the same way that it is in Korea, though, because there's tourism across, state, across lines, there's, there's uh, workers from Taiwan working within there, the tourism industry is gigantic, they trade over like $200 billion, and I think in the last 20 or 30 years alone. So obviously, a civil war where you're trading, tourism, doesn't really sound like a, a very bloody civil war that's currently going on. There has been violence in 75 years. But let's say, let's pretend that it's a civil war for a moment, right? That it's and not just, you know, on paper. In Myanmar right now, there is what is, if you would to be honest, a civil war. One third of the country, according to certain analysts, one third of the country, according to certain analysts, is controlled by rebel forces that are fighting against a military dictatorship that overthrew the democratically elected government of Aung San Suu Kyi. This is irrelevant. This, let me finish. Chinese involvement in the civil war. What is that involvement? Let me involvement? finish. Military uh, intervention or arms deals? So, they have sent aid to the military government. That's exactly They have it. sold weapons to the That's military exactly government, it. which they then use to not only ethnically cleanse minorities in the country, but put down rebellions. And what is our involvement when it comes to Taiwan through the Taiwan Relations Act, for example? Much worse. Mostly sending them weapons through trade deals, the exact same thing they're doing with their involvement in an active, ongoing civil war where people are dying right now. If they're US allowed to do it, are, why are we not US allowed to do it? U.S. troops are in Taiwan. U.S. troops are in Taiwan. Not officially, but they are. And what about, do you want to talk about 
They are secretly and covertly. They yes, are they secretly are. and covertly. Yes. They're training operations. Well, maybe because yeah. they're an independent nation, they're allowed to have that. Okay. Well, China, you're saying China's two faced for selling arms and giving aid to yeah, a government. Yeah, because, because, they, because what they do is. But they it has friendly play, relations with oppose, that government. They have, yeah, and an ongoing civil war. They're taking sides. Also, the, the status quo in that country is the government. The it's the government that's the recognized. You're telling me the military dictatorship, Listen, which China, is through a democracy, is the You don't understand quo. Chinese. They upended Chinese, the status quo Chinese, Myanmar. What well, guess what? About? Officially speaking, but officially speaking, that is the government of my, Myanmar. China works, not, not recognized by many China works you care with the, China tradition. works with governments that are in power. China works... China worked with the Shah of Iran, and then it worked with the Ayatollahs. China works with whoever's in power, and it doesn't care about the internal political okay. uh, then I, conflict. Then America just works with what's in power in Taipei. No, it doesn't, because, yes, America, do. because America has a specific agenda to meddle in China's affairs and promote independence of China. And the Chinese are meddling in the No, they don't. The China's very pragmatic. Wait, but what about what, what, with the burnout China of does, factories? And the only time the Chinese got interested, it was like, never mind, we really need to stop, was when their factories getting burned down. They don't care that their gun are being used to mow down protests. Yeah, they in care. Myanmar. China they cares. They don't care. Hey, they will help them. We can learn from China. China to help mow down protests. China, <laughs> China cares about China. America should care about America. So we should sell more weapons to Saudi Arabia then, because it's very profitable. All right, I think that's going to stop right there. I believe you have the next question, sir. So this is for both of you, and it's kind of a, a broader question. We touched on it a bit, but I want to ask directly, kind of. What justifies sovereignty for a government? What, what legitimizes a government? What kind of factors go into whether we should support government? This is an issue not just in Taiwan, but also across the world, like in Ukraine, yeah. in Israel and Palestine. So this, this is a uh, philosophical question. And the German theorist, Carl Schmitt, does not define sovereignty based on some kind of external measurement. Sovereignty is, in short, as Hobbes pointed out, based on material realities. Sovereignty is based on a monopoly on violence, it's based on force, it's based on might. It's not based on some independent source verifying the sovereignty. Now you could talk about other countries recognizing your sovereignty, which is an important thing, but sovereignty is based in material, not moral uh, or ethical realities. Yeah, and the material re reality is that Taiwan's government is what controls the island of Taiwan. That's material let reality. Them try and Therefore, declare recognize it as a nation. Then let, the let, let them try and declare independence and see what happens. Say, wait, so if it walks like a horse, talks like a horse, and it's everything like a horse, but it doesn't say I'm a horse, is it or is it not a horse? It's not a horse yet because it's not allowed to have U.S. troops on its soil officially. So you're, so if I said, so if everybody in here said this isn't a phone, would you be like, oh, I guess it's Taiwan, Taiwan is literally restricted from doing things a sovereign nation could do officially. Because the Chinese government has tried to do that on the international stage. But by the way, so it can't have troops so, on its soil. So what it cannot what, have U.S. troops so on its soil. So what you're saying is that the Chinese government, the mainland government, in 1960, it doesn't walk like not, a horse. Let me ask you a question. It doesn't walk like a Was horse. the Chinese? A horse can have troops on its soil officially. I don't know. If, I don't, <laughs> I don't know of any horse that has troops on its soil, but what I will say, if that's what you're saying, then you would have to recognize that in 1960, the, main, the government in the mainland China was not a legitimate nation because it did not have large-scale international recognition or a seat at the United Nations. The People's Republic of China was not a nation because it didn't have international recognition? Yeah, 1960. No. Well, that, was, that didn't reflect the material uh, reality, which the world eventually woke up and adjusted to, that the overwhelming majority of the Chinese people are under the sovereignty of the Communist Party. So eventually they woke up to that reality. And is that going to happen with Taiwan? So international well, recognition. Wait, wait and see. Wait, keep waiting for that to happen for Isn't Taiwan. That All right, back, back there <laughs> with the keep recognition. Waiting. So, teach up. Yeah, yeah sir. So, uh, you mentioned that China doesn't like to impose things on people that they don't want it, something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. um, except the Uyghurs, Taiwan, Hong Kong. They're building islands. Where does China's border actually end? Like, as you mentioned, the early... The Chinese. historical Qing borders that were carved up by the British and other uh, colonials. But as far as the Uyghur situation is concerned, Xinjiang has been part of China for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. So that is a people who have already been under the system and sovereignty of the Communist Party for a very, very long time. So my point is they're not going to go to another uh, territory and impose their system. The Uyghurs have already been living under the system. Now, if you don't like the details of how that system has been executed so far, it's a separate question. But they have already been living under the system. Why would you trust the colonialists to draw up the borders? Because the Scarborough Shoal, for example, which China claims, is mostly used by Filipino fishermen and is claimed by the Philippines in international courts, which 
China recognizes Those international me, courts finish, are please. illegitimate because I, I didn't interrupt the you. territorial I didn't dispute, interrupt you. The territorial Jesus dispute Christ, between China up. and the Philippines shut up. has been arbitrated Jesus in a bilateral Christ. matter. It is not under the jurisdiction Andrew, of the international the, court. And you want to know what? The last in the bilateral matter, this. they lost and then they just rejected No, they didn't. Yeah, they did lose. They came yeah, to an they, agreement with the Philippines. They, they, the wait, Philippines wait, didn't like what? it, so they ran to the UN. And then the UN said what? Doesn't matter, China. Yeah, and the, this but, was, but UN it doesn't matter matters because the UN has no sovereignty. UN. The Isn't UN, the UN has no sovereignty to that's execute. So its, the UN has no sovereignty to execute its authority over bilateral so relations. So UN rec recognition or by the UN when it comes to Taiwan. No, that matters because it's not a unilateral this, matter. It that doesn't a, matter. It is a bilateral matter between the that Philippines so and China, which and was and arbitrated between okay. China I and the Philippines. Say one more thing. And then real quick though, I'll let you sum that. Then you get the last word. But again, getting back to the whole recognition thing, so it sounds like we could have a follow-on here, but before we go to the next question, go ahead. The people in Xinjiang do not like being monitored in every aspect of their life, and they are. They don't even deny... Your own sources admit it's not true anymore. <laughs> Let him finish, you'll have the You're last You're saying word. that my sources say that there have not been a, an, an extreme increase in the level of monitoring... No, the they're, they're now claiming it's all, me, it's all done. Not even letting me, you didn't even let me talk. Jesus, okay? So, in Xinjiang... These are things that are undisputable for fact, even according to the Chinese government. When it comes to the monitoring of street cameras in the everyday life of Uyghurs, the Chinese government has heavily ramped up monitoring them. This has been claimed that this is needed to do for anti-terrorism measures. But that does not mean it's been recepted, accepted with open arms by the local population. Another thing is the banning of certain religious, uh, I would say, religious activities. Now, specifically, I are you up to date on your sources? Because they're now saying they're all not, that's. They're now I saying they no. They're, they're now saying, saying they've eased up. They're on not. They're not saying what I'm. Yes, look, they have. Now let me finish. They said they've let eased up surveillance. They've eased up finish. the crackdown. But you're outdated. I don't care. You're, you're time outdated. waster. You're, you're time wait, waster. I'm outdated. Yet you're just your sources you're are Marxist out of date. Leninist, and I'm outdated. You're, you're, that's very funny. Well, so Marxism Leninism is much newer than Anglo-Saxon liberalism from the 16th century. And what one? Us, okay, yeah, we're getting off topic again there. So next question. So uh, my question is to, uh, to Infrared here, and it seems like your entire moralistic worldview is based on might makes right and material conditions. It's I'm a materialist. It's okay. not about might makes right. Okay, but you keep make, you keep bringing up the fact that uh, the the reason that China has the sovereign authority that it does is because it has a monopoly on power. It's able to exert its control over people, et cetera, et cetera, which is a might makes right argument. So if the material conditions are what basically says what exists and might makes right, then wouldn't it be uh, in America's best interest to go imperialistic again and take over Taiwan in response to China, since that's what China the, is seeming um, to want to do? There is a country one that one, has one tried second. this. One second. I understand the point of Well, I just want to make it sure for the rest of the okay, audience. Okay, right. So uh, the White House China has been doing with other countries that border it, the border it, such as Tibet, uh, such as Vietnam in the 60s or 70s rather, <coughs> such as uh, like Dylan brought up Myanmar okay. or Burma. So that was so the okay. So Tibet has never bordered China. It's always been a part of China. Now, in regards to other border disputes, China has always settled these matters not only in a way that's fair but in a way that overwhelmingly benefits the countries it's negotiating with. China ceded like 80% of its territory in one of its borders with uh, Afghanistan, for example, right? So when China gets to the books and say, we have to settle this territorial dispute, China's very generous with uh, negotiations and has proven so. Now, regarding Myanmar and, and Vietnam, there was a border dispute with Vietnam in the 70s, but that's what it was. It was a border dispute. It wasn't some kind of uh, a, a arbitrary imperialist encroachment. It was a dispute about territory that could not be solved diplomatically. Finally, as to the question of might makes right, you could say, why doesn't America just use its might to invade the entire world? There's a country that has tried the precedent of just simply, hey, we, if we can do it, let's do it. It was the German, the Nazi Germans. They tried this in World War II. It was proven that this is not a path uh, countries and states can take just to completely circumvene the customs and norms, which are a material reality as well, um, that are in place. Because when you declare war against the entire world, you're going to have a world war and you're going to have uh, the world unite against you. So America can try this. It just wouldn't be very wise.
so just a follow up on that. I'm specifically talking about Taiwan here. Yeah. Within regards it would to not be good for America. Within regards to Taiwan, the Taiwanese people seem to be, as Dylan is saying, uh, against China taking back part of If America... Back. So right, isn't it in yeah. America's interest as long as well as the Taiwanese interest to join forces to provide Why is China? it in our interest? Because of things like Dylan said, with the chip manufacturing, the uh, the territory, there will be no disputes, alteration to the chip manufacturing under Chinese. Uh, but we have examples. With China's Taiwan's already replicating event, Taiwan's chip industry at home anyway. Well, that but that gives more power to China, and right. I know that you Wait, like wouldn't that. that justify us having like it that. more because then we would want our own our own ability to take in chips from a separate country? We already China? can do that. We don't need they, to invade Taiwan to do that. Oh, you don't need to in, invade. If America wants to replicate the chips that Taiwan produces, it can do so in the same way that China By does. By trading and recognizing them as a sovereign nation. No, because China doesn't do that, and yet it's able to make its own so, domestic chips. This is a dead-end argument. Let me ask you about something, because you said that they always resolve these conflicts uh, like fairly. Now, if you said most of the time, maybe it would have been easier, but the Scarborough Shoal was very self-evident, where they took their ships... They put them on the Scarborough Shoal, then told the Filipinos, you want to fish here, this is what has been historically your fishing territory, you got to just come to the table and agree with us on all this stuff. Then the Filipinos come to the table after the United Nations says, hey, you know, you're a member state and you agreed to follow these rules, China, what about all this? China just disregarded them. The international organization, which you use as a justification to say what is and isn't a nation state due to that international no, recognition. Didn't. Yes, yes, you did. International recognition was part of your argument. I said it's a factor. It's yes, not the determining was, factor. The United Nations is definitely considered. The United Nations of, is not the determining factor not as far the as the, factor. the international the community factors. is concerned. One of the determining factors on the international China has community. contested... The UN the, is part of the international... The China has obvious. contested the jurisdiction of the UN in that case, in that uh, hearing, because, the, because it was settled bilaterally. And if you want to know if did China act unjustly, mm -hmm. China is simply returning to the status quo that existed before the British arbitrarily came with their guns and their opium to carve up the well, Qing what if dynasty. That, what if the, the Qing alongside, dynasty... Alongside the Qing Empire, alongside the rest mm -hmm. of the European so colonial So what if the Qing Empire was, you know, an empire, and therefore a lot of the territory it invaded, it shouldn't actually have had control of... I've and actually they, debated with you about this. You're so historically illiterate that you don't understand the structure of pre-modern empires and the manner by which they went about territorial conquest, annexation, assimilation, is entirely different from European colonialism. If you don't understand that, you are simply historically illiterate. With that, we're coming up against your time block here. So did you have a question? Yes. Uh, one final question, so go ahead. And if you stand between the cameras now so the mics can pick it up. Yeah. Uh, my question is, well, for both of you, and you know, America, um, we're known for having really chat energy from separating from Britain. So why not respect the chat energy of the Taiwanese and let them separate from China. Why, 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 why try to stick up for the guy who lost? Because the circumstances are entirely different between the material conditions that gave rise to the American independence and the so-called independence movement within Taiwan. Now, China is a 5,000 year long civilization. United States broke with the UK, which colonized the New World very recently, uh, and because the people of uh, America became indigenized and nationally, culturally, civilizationally different from the people in the United Kingdom after centuries and centuries of indigenization. This process has not occurred whatsoever in, in Taiwan. In Taiwan, the Taiwanese people and the Chinese people are the same people. They engage in trade, marriage, uh, personal relations, cultural exchange, the same movies and TV they watch, the same music they listen to, they're the same exact uh, people who are under the uh, different uh, ideological governments. Um, the Taiwanese people disagree with him. Uh, they identify culturally uh, now more as Taiwanese. All the polling data shows that. Uh, also, the reason why they don't like the chat Taiwanese is because they're soying out. All right. All righty then. Thank you. And with that, I'd like to thank both of you for making this one more lively and entertaining. Stay tuned for further information on the boxing match. But, yeah. Uh, Hell yeah. Appreciate everybody's uh, professional questions there.